Welcome. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Welcome to another episode of The New World Next Week, where it's, of course, everything you need. You can find at NewWorldNextWeek.com. Links to the archives, the sources, YouTube, high quality, low quality, audio, video, This everything you need is NewWorldNextWeek.com. James, we thought about for a brief moment talking and running down all of the Super Bowl, Snooper Bowl, police state technology that's going to be on display in the coming weekend. But ultimately, I think we've we've kind of done that to death. And if you're stupid enough to go to the Super Bowl, then that's kind of what you deserve, if I may put it so bluntly, James. Let's begin, however, with a quick deconstruction on the things that weren't heard, and we could call it SOTU. STFU, and that would be Obama misleading the nation at the recent State of the Union address here in the disunited states of America. So we'll begin with the first point. Obama misleads nation on Iran deal from freebeacon.com. Obama omitted and obfuscated many key details about the Iranian nuclear deal during his Tuesday evening State of the Union address, according to nuclear experts and Capitol Hill insiders working on this very issue. Obama claimed that the recently inked interim nuclear deal is a tough agreement that immediately rolls back Iran's nuclear program in significant ways. While Iran is required to halt some of its high-level enrichment of uranium, the key component in a nuclear weapon, it's not actually required to eliminate it. And even if Iran fully complied with the interim deal, its ability to build a nuclear weapon will be delayed by just one month, according to experts. James, the other two points, and you can take them or leave them. Obama spoke about the 60,000 troops he's pulled out of Afghanistan and not the 50,000 he's put in there, but he did a really good job of putting up the poor Corey Rimsberg, who even the Guardian notes is a hero and a symbol of America's terrible decisions. The third omission in the State of the Union Obama silent on the NSA cryptography reform. This coming from Threat Level on Wired. Obama in his State of the Union on Tuesday failed to address an issue that affects everyone on the Internet, the NSA subversion of cryptographic standards and technologies. The article goes on to point out that he's not even following up on his own boards and recommendation groups. So, James, those are the three things not mentioned in what is just a big a big, grand show. And I can tell you by working at a news radio station, anytime these big addresses come on, you just kind of smack your head and know, oh, it's going to mess up my show. You're interrupting. We're not caring. And it's just, it's a disaster. Exactly right. Disaster is the key word. And I think that those three points are well taken, but I think they don't go anywhere near as far far enough. And in fact, with that Washington Free Beacon um, neocon rag, um, I would only recommend people click on that to see what the neocon vector of attack on uh, the president is regarding the State of the Union address, if you can stomach it. Um, but the real thing that's he- hidden about the Iranian nuclear deal is not that Iran is some secret nuclear threat that's going to renege at any moment, but that the only the only nuclear power in the Middle East is Israel. That is the big excluded um, factor in this speech and in every speech of every U.S. president since Lyndon B. Johnson decided to make it official U.S. policy to never admit that Israel has a nuclear uh, stockpile of an estimated 400 weapons, but no one knows because Israel, unlike Iran, has never let anyone in to inspect their nuclear program, and they have never signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, unlike Iran. Also, unlike Iran, they're the only uh, power in that a region that consistently and constantly bombs its neighbors, including Syria and Lebanon. So if there is any threat to the Middle East, it is Israel, not Iran. That's the excluded part of that story. Um, the U.S. Army Ranger is not a hero. He's just another puppet that's been used by this imperial war machine as just a part of that meat grinder. And it's disgusting to see the uh, the completion of that life cycle of that piece of meat uh, that they've used in that battlefield in uh, as a political prop on the stage there. And then, of course, with NSA crypto reforms. Uh, I just have to roll my head and roll my eyes and, and wonder if anyone at all is believing that anything will change substantially with what the NSA is doing secretly behind our backs anyway. And there's no way for any oversight of any of this. It's all 
smoke and mirrors on the on the stage. It has no relevance whatsoever. I was actually going to do this big long spiel trying to debunk all of his ridiculous points about unemployment and housing bubbles and and the like in that speech. But at the end of the day, what's the point? I think the best thing we can do about this is just simply turn it off. This political puppet does not set the political agenda. He is just following his Wall Street puppets, uh, pu- puppet master's orders, and uh, and I don't care what he has to say about any of this, really. I, I do find it fascinating that, at least speaking on the, the NSA part of it, how well and how long he can go without actually addressing the, the things that folks find most important, whether that's NSA or starting to grow industrial hemp or any of those kind of points, he's always just completely mum, and it's it's just kind of fascinating to watch from a, from a media and political kind of standpoint. James, our second story is a fascinating one, and we grab it from our good friends at blacklistednews.com coming via Extreme Tech. Major patent expiration could spark a second 3D printing revolution. One of the central patents controlling production of a specific type of 3D printer expired yesterday, and the news has the 3D printing community buzzing. The patent concerns selective laser sintering, that's S-I-N-T-E-R-I-N-G, S-L-S, selective laser sintering, a form of additive manufacturing that offers some significant advantage over other techniques of 3D printing. Today, the cost of an SLS printer can run as high as $250,000, but the hope is that this patent expiration will drastically reduce that figure. It might seem extreme, but that claim isn't without evidence. After the expiration of the patent for fused deposition modeling, FDM, an enormous open source movement appeared almost overnight. What had once been a corporate oddity became a popular DIY project, and companies arose to cater to a whole new market— the enthusiast 3D printing customer. These rickety and relatively low-fidelity printers found great traction with the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi crowd, two different types of 3D printers, and their successes led directly to the low-cost mid-range printers available today. And James, I know you can speak on this pretty well, and I've already put it in the show notes. Flashback to your solutions episode on 3D printing. Exactly right. I'm also going to throw in a link uh, to a related story from Boing Boing. Key 3D printing patent expired yesterday because they go into some detail about what this what this potentially means and the fact that this isn't necessarily going to be um, the overnight kind of uh, uh, releasing of the this technology. As unfortunately, there are a bunch of overlapping um, t- uh, patents around this special uh, laser sintering technology that unfortunately still apply. So it's not necessarily that the floodgates are going to open. Although hopefully we're going to see at least some people jumping into this ring. And it really is uh, ironic how there are all these patents holding down the technology, which itself threatens to explode our very idea of what patents are, why they're necessary, or how they help the economy. We are truly on the cusp of a a, a manufacturing revolution, the likes of which we can barely even understand the contours of at this point, and it is being held down by this ridiculous patent law, which is only hindering uh, advancement and development exactly as it is intended to do for the big companies that have the regulators in their back pockets and can make sure that they get the justice for some, and uh, and everyone else can get screwed. And uh, that's the sad state of affairs, but the the bright part of all of this is that uh, the the DFM and the other technologies have been unleashed. There are open source communities that are working on really exploding this uh, this revolution and taking it to the next stage. So I am very hopeful overall that this will lead um, to towards that revolution that we want. But we have to be all have to be a part of it. I have a lot more to say on this, but I will be writing about this in my uh, uh, subscriber newsletter this weekend, so people can take a look at that for more on this subject and the idea that uh, liberty and justice is only for those who have the money to afford it. James, I almost lost myself there in some kind of meta thoughts there of what you said about that they're using the patents to suppress something that would destroy our our concept of patents. I just started to think of other ideas of like, you know, imagine a song that could come out and destroy the music corporate industry or any of those kind of ways. So you can kind of ruminate on that, and I, I'd like that. James, I, I think this also kind of goes in with You know, I think at our best here, what we try and do is give folks a little glimpse into the future. You know, it may be very short. Sometimes it's a little longer. But I think the things we've talked about here, whether it's 3D printing or Bitcoin or even Google Glass, 
becomes part of, of the mainstream conversation. So I think our third and final story will kind of push that point a, a little further. An update on a story, James, that you and I covered right here on New World Next Week over two years ago now, back on December 15th, 2011. And that original story was drones assist in corralling North Dakota cattle rustlers. I was actually kind of surprised it was that long ago, James. It, time flies. So the update comes via our friend Guillermo Jimenez via his Twitter account at Traces of Reality, noting, hey, remember when law enforcement using drones was controversial? Yeah, that was fast. So from RT.com, the update, first American arrested with help from drone is sentenced. A North Dakota farmer who was the first U.S. citizen to be arrested in a situation where law enforcement had help from a drone has also become the first to be convicted and sentenced, thanks in part to an unmanned aerial vehicle. Rodney Brosart, a cattle rancher, was sentenced to three years in prison for terrorizing police officers in 2011, although two and a half years of that sentence were suspended. Six cows wandered onto Brosart's property near Grand Forks, North Dakota, and when he refused to return the cattle to his neighbor, a SWAT team was called in to disband the police standoff. The story goes on and gets into the gory details, which, again, you can go through the, the bit by bit of the story in the flashback notes for you. But the present day, Bruce Quick, Brosart's attorney, told U.S. News & World Report that the use of the drone was illegal because it was, quote, dispatched without judicial approval or a warrant, and also noted that the tasing of Rodney Brosart equated to guerrilla-like police tactics. James? Well, I did like the way that uh, that Guillermo put this in his tweet because it really is exactly like that. Just a couple of years ago, it was a big deal that drones were employed by by law enforcement. Now it isn't such a big deal. No one cares. Uh, welcome to the, uh, the the conditioning process. So, I guess uh, we have to continue pointing this out and 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 hopefully telling people that why this is such a big problem but unfortunately it's just part of that process that people get whittled down and once they start to accept the idea of amazon delivering uh, things by drone i think it's uh, it's kind of a lost cause for for people raising people's ire about this issue but again it's uh, as i say it's just part of the conditioning process you know james i i, I i'm putting you on the spot here i i think we could probably do this more often with New World Next Week. Now that we're, we're essentially entering our fifth year, we can do some of these updates and show that we've put a lot of this on the record in the years in the past. So as long as we are also mentioning updates, I just want to throw in a, a couple of updates to the West Virginia chemical spill, which keeps developing and keeps unsurprisingly, unfortunately, getting worse and worse as we learn more and more that's been hidden and covered up. James, I'll also mention for folks to submit stories to us on Twitter using hashtag New World Next Week. You and I certainly can't keep up with all of it, and we love and need and require and subsist and survive on everyone else's help and, and story ideas and support. That's right, and we can't use all of the ideas that come in, but hopefully we can create a New World Next Week community of people who are following that hashtag and looking at these stories and, and part of, becoming part of the process rather than just uh, part of the spectators. So anyway, uh, James, thank you again for your stories this week. Thanks so much, man. Take care.